All right, this is Unit 5.3, Chapter 5, whatever you want to call it. Basically, this will be a big review on work is all it's going to be. So our big review on work problems. So let's see what we can't get into here. What is work? Work is FS. Uh, let's see. What if you've got something being pulled at an angle? Well, no big deal. If it's an angle, we'll write F cos and theta s. And again, s is the actual distance that you move something. All right. Uh, let's go into, okay, what other types of work? Well, you can have work being done by gravity, mgy initial minus mgy final which is actually nothing more than if you look at it potential energy final minus potential ener or potential energy initial minus potential energy final potential energy due to gravity is nothing but mgy in the first place and then let's see we can also do work done by spring which is one half kxi square minus one half kxf square and potential energy for a spring is given by the equation one half k x square. So all that kind of ties together. If you don't remember what k is, it's known as a spring constant. It'll usually be something like 20 newton slash meters. It tells you how much force it takes to displace a spring. And x stands for that displacement. Half the time, I, let's go and say 90 something percent of the time you work a problem one of your two x's is going to be a zero. One of your two y's is going to be a zero. For me, y initial always ends up zero because I always make my y initial zero when I work a problem. So anyway, all right, so let's kind of keep moving on down through here a little bit. Um, uh, the only other problem that really sticks out, oh, wait, well, if we've got friction, and we'll write negative little f s. And if you're working a problem with friction, at any time that could be rewritten as negative mu n s, uh, which could also be written as negative mu m g s if you're on flat ground. And if you were on a hillside, you could rewrite as negative mu m g cosine theta s. So anyway, all those are variations of work done by friction if you've got it. And if you're just working a problem, maybe somebody pulls a string, has a giant parachute behind them that's resisting. Well, it's still, all you got to do is if you have a, a work due to like some type of resistance force, all you've got to do is just put a negative in front of the F, I'll put FR, S, just put a negative in front of it. Because what happens, these are known as non-conservative uh, forces. In other words, these actually remove energy from a system whenever we're working a problem. So other than that, if you know this, all you've got to do now is be able to work problems using what we call work net. Equals delta KE. And since we know that KE, kinetic energy, is one half mass times the velocity square, we can rewrite work net as one half mv square minus one half mvo. Oh no! Square. About had to run out of room there on that one. But anyway, we've got a lot of different types of problems we can do in these problems. Just read the problems. If you work a problem and in that problem something is on flat ground, well, if something is on flat ground, that means right off the bat, there's no work done by gravity in the problem. If you see a spring in the problem, then you know there's work done by a spring. Uh, just look for what's present in the question. If you work a problem, something's going up or down a hill. Well, you instantly know now you do have work done by gravity. What about a pendulum? Oh, I love the pendulum question. And we haven't really worked a pendulum that I'm aware of. But when a pendulum swings like this, pendulums, let's do one of those right now. Uh, let's work a pendulum question. Uh, they're actually very, very easy. What makes a pendulum hard usually is just one little bit of trigonometry. Let's put it in there because I always put a pendulum question on the test. So let's have a pendulum. 
And by pendulum, I think the most famous one is Tarzan sweeping down to grab Jane off the floor or something like that. So let's put somebody up here. So we could say that this is Tarzan up here, Tarzan or something. Uh, and Tarzan goes swinging on his vine as only Tarzan knows how to swing. Tarzan swings and we might try and I have no idea what it is we're trying to find. Ah, oh, how about this? Let's try and find Tarzan's velocity at the bottom. So let's assume Tarzan is at a zero up here. Uh, how long is Tarzan's vine? Uh, let's say that Tarzan is swimming on a 20 meter tall piece of rope. Uh, now this problem is usually going to give you an angle up here. So an angle of, let's go with 20 degrees. Now the whole reason for you knowing this is one thing. When you get ready to work this problem, what is vital is this. I'm going to notice, notice what I'm doing here. I'm cutting this pendulum across here into a right triangle. Because all I really want to know is this. I need to know what was his vertical, what was Tarzan's vertical displacement. Tarzan didn't fall 20 meters. Tarzan only fell this far. So here's the thing. We know that this rope is 20 meters long. So again, the only thing that makes a pendulum question any catch to it is this. Look at what we've got. We've got 20 and an angle of, just so happens, 20. Uh-oh. We've got a right triangle. Matter of fact, if you use cosine of 20 equals the adjacent, this side would be the adjacent, over 20, over the hypotenuse of 20. Make sure we're in degrees. Cosine of 20 times 20, 18.79. So we're basically at 18.8. .8. That means in this problem, the distance from here to here is 18.8 .8 meters. It also means my scale is terrible. But what this tells us in this problem is that Tarzan's only falling 1.2 meters. That's it. Now this problem is really easy because here's what's going to happen. The only kind of work in this problem is work being done by gravity. And that's going to end up being equal to delta Ke. And once you've done enough of these problems, you're to learn something. When all you've got is this situation going, you're going to end up with mgy, and that's going to end up being equal to, let's see, it ended up being this, negative mgy final equals one-half mvo square, or mv square. Masses would cancel, negative 9.8 times Tarzan fell 1.2 meters equals one-half V square. So Tarzan, 9.8 times 1.2, the negatives cancel. Divide by half, take the square root. 4.8 meters per second would be Tarzan's velocity at the bottom of his swing. I can't stress enough, the only catch to a pendulum is this one little thing right here. But anyway, go through, work these problems. I'll try and do a test review video. But anyway, uh, thank you all for watching.